we have a we had a very productive meeting um, with good interactions with the public, uh, those present in the room and those on the web. Uh, we adopted three uh, important opinions on which we have been working for the last three years. Uh, two of those opinions were related to DRVs, dietary reference values for sodium and chloride. And by the way, this is the achievement of the DRVs program, which is now finished, started 10 years ago. And we also uh, adopted uh, an important opinion on the appropriate age for introduction of complementary foods in infants. Uh, the European Commission asked ask us to give uh, advice on the age that of introduction of complementary food that could be used for the labeling of commercially produced uh, baby foods. Uh, for this, we uh, assessed the scientific evidence which was available on the appropriate age of introduction of complementary foods for uh, infants living in, in Europe. And uh, basically, we assessed uh, not only the infant's nutritional needs, but also the development of the infant and uh, health outcomes. What we did not do is the assessment of social and cultural aspects of uh, complementary feeding, uh, but the uh, EU uh, decision makers uh, will work on this, um, but this is not under um, EFSA's remit. So. Uh, one of the main outcomes was there is no single precise age at which infants should be introduced to complementary foods. For purely nutritional reasons, uh, infants need to be introduced, most, the majority of infants need to be uh, introduced to complementary foods at around uh, six months of age. The different aspects to help to determine the uh, appropriate age of introduction of complementary foods are uh, basically the nutritional needs of the infants, uh, the developmental readiness of those uh, infants, the health effects of this introduction, either good or bad, uh, and, and the texture of the food. When, when introducing complementary foods before the age of six months, we found no evidence of harmful effects of uh, this uh, introduction, uh, also taking into account the potentially allergenic foods, such as egg, fish, peanut, cereals, and also the introduction of gluten. Well, we, we are not saying at all that uh, breastfeeding or formula feeding should be stopped before the age of six months. We had a look at the scientific evidence to see if uh, the introduction of complementary foods before six months makes a difference with respect to nutrition, to development, and to health outcomes. Uh, the benefits of uh, exclusive breastfeeding is uh, an important issue, but uh, we did not uh, assess this. We consider the different uh, ways of feeding of infants, exclusive breast, exclusively breastfed or formula fed or mixed fed, because that's the reality in Europe now. So I'm a practicing pediatrician, so from a personal uh, point of view, uh, I can see how important it is for uh, for the parents to uh, introduce uh, the complementary foods. It's a very important step for them, uh, with not only from the nutritional point of view, but for many other aspects such as social or cultural ones. I think that EFSA's work uh, provides a, a strong scientific contribution to uh, the EU uh, decision makers on uh, the appropriate age of introduction of complementary foods in relation to the labeling of, of baby foods.